You don't need a luxury kitchen to prepare gourmet meals. My name is Dennis. I live in a mobile home in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I feel like I haven't cooked anything Italian in a while, so today I want to make my version of chicken cacciatore, and it's a little bit different. I got the idea from an Italian cookbook that has a recipe for chicken cacciatore done in the traditional Tuscan style. I experimented with it and to be honest it was awful. The chicken was overcooked, it didn't have a lot of flavor to it. I didn't like it. I'm going to do it more in the Italian American style which puts vegetables in there, celery and chopped mushrooms etc. And I'll explain how I change some of the things just so that you know where chicken cacciatore comes from. Cacciatore is Italian for hunter. So this is chicken in the hunter style. And the tradition was the men would go out and hunt wild game birds, bring them back, cut them up, cook them in a, some sort of a sauce and make a meal out of it. We've made it more elegant over the years. So that's what I'm going to do today. Kind of a fancy meal that I would be proud to serve to guests. So let's start cooking my version of chicken cacciatore. I have some fresh rosemary here from my garden. That's the last of the herbs that I have out there. I have a rosemary bush and then I have some fresh sage from the local grocery store. I need to pull the leaves, the needles, off of some rosemary branches here and then coarsely chop these. I need about a tablespoon of chopped rosemary. This recipe makes use of some strong herbs and a lot of them and that comes out of the fact that some of these game birds might have a gamey flavor to them and rather than trying to mask that you work with herbs that work with the flavor of the birds and that gives you a more depth of flavor. That's how I like to think about it. I've got my rosemary chopped here. I need about a tablespoon. That'll be enough. Toss this aside. I don't need this. And then I want to pull off about 10 of my sage leaves. I love fresh sage. It's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. I don't even think about making stuffing for like turkey or goose or chicken unless I'm working with fresh sage. And this I want to just coarsely chop. Like so. This doesn't have to be too fancy. I mean we are making it a little bit fancier than a little bit more elegant than in the hunter's style, but this doesn't have to be done too fine. All right, so there's my 10 sage leaves. And that's my herbs. I've got a large enameled pot here on the stove heating over medium heat. I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. This is regular cooking olive oil. It's not extra virgin olive oil, which I reserved for flavoring. And then I'm going to add my chopped sage and my chopped rosemary. Give that a stir. This is basically just to flavor that oil. So that's all I'm interested in. And I'm going to just cook this for maybe two minutes. In the meantime, I need to chop my parsley. I pulled the leaves off of about 12 sprigs of Italian parsley, discarding the stems. I'm going to chop these up kind of fine. That's good enough. Got my bench scraper here. So that's my chopped parsley. Next I can work on my basil. Next I want to chop up some basil. I have three 
really good leafy sprigs of fresh basil. So I took the better leaves off and I set those aside to do a chiffonade. I'll explain that when I get to it. Then the smaller, less pretty leaves, those I'm going to chop up just like I did the parsley and that's going to go into the sauce. So I can just really coarsely chop these. This doesn't really matter. In fact, you could if you wanted to, you could just tear this up with your fingers. I think larger bits of basil look better in a sauce anyways. All right, so there's my chopped basil. In the meantime, I'm returning to my oil and my herbs. That's the rosemary and the sage. I just reduced my heat a little bit. I'm going to put my red wine in there. That's a half a cup of red wine, which is about 120 milliliters. And then I need to crush some garlic in there. You can mince this with a knife if you want. I just think it's easier to crush it in. I've got three cloves of garlic that I'm going to be putting in here. They're not that large. Okay, there's my three cloves of garlic. My chopped parsley, my chopped basil. And one bay leaf, if they're big, I'm putting in two because they're small. And then I'm going to bring this up to a boil and let this simmer to reduce that liquid by about one half. My liquid has reduced nicely here. It's still quite a bit of liquid in there, but that's about half of what it originally was. I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons, good heaping tablespoon of tomato paste to this. And then I have a cup and a half, which is about 350 milliliters of chicken stock. This is my homemade chicken stock. I made this last night. You could, if you wanted to, use the stuff that they sell in the store, the chicken broth. That'll be fine. I'm only going to be adding this about one half cup at a time. That's about 120 milliliters. Good. Increase my heat. Bring this up to a boil. And then I'm going to be covering this pan and cooking this for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Every five minutes, I'll take the lid off check the liquid content and then add more liquid till I use up all of my chicken stock. I want a sauce here. I don't want a syrup, but I don't want a soup either, if that makes any sense. So in the meantime, while my sauce is cooking, it has about seven to eight minutes to go, I'm going to start prepping my vegetables that are going to go into my finished dish. I have six mushrooms here. Total weight is about four ounces. That's about 110 grams. I'm just going to coarsely chop these up. Not trying to do anything too fancy here. So somewhat I'm staying like in the maybe the rustic hunter's style. I mean I'm obviously not trying to make a stew either, which is big chunks. All right, there's my mushrooms. Now I have two stalks of celery here. These, again, weigh about four ounces, 110 grams. I'm gonna cut these up. Gonna trim these edges a little bit, these ends. I don't care about the leaves being in there because the leaves add a lot of flavor to soups and sauces. But I'm not going to be real fancy about how I cut these up either. Make sure that they're clean. There's usually some mud here at the top. Down here on the ends where it's a little bit larger, I'll add extra slices. I know I'm using the wrong knife for this, but I just don't want to switch pieces, switch knives back and forth.
Oh, that celery smells delicious. I have in the meantime boiled three Roma tomatoes. These weigh together about eight ounces, which is about 225 grams. By boiling them for about 15-20 seconds, after you cut a little X into the bottom, the skin peels off a lot more easily. Trying to peel a tomato without boiling it first can be a real challenging task. And what I want to do is just cut into them and then with my knife just go in there and just kind of separate the seeds a little bit and kind of squeeze those out. There aren't a lot of seeds in these, which is kind of useful. Now that I got my tomatoes seeded and peeled, I'm just going to again coarsely chop these like the other vegetables. I like to use, even though I use tomato paste, I like to use fresh tomatoes in a dish like this because it just gives it that fresh flavor rather than a canned tomato flavor. The tomatoes obviously aren't going to contribute a lot of bulk to the sauce, but they're going to give it some flavor. All right, so there's my tomatoes. My last step here is to chop up one half of a large onion. If you've seen my other videos, when I chop onions, I have my own way of doing it. I don't do it like the chefs on TV. Because I think there's a too high of a risk of cutting myself. And one fan of my website wrote in to say he did cut himself doing it the chef's way. So I have my own way of doing it. Make sure I get all my peel off there. Then I'm going to cut down to quarter the onion and then cut down through it. I'm not going to go for a fine dice, but again, I'm not making a stew, so I'm not trying to go for large chunks either. So a medium dice. This large onion, by the way, weighs about 170 grams or 6 ounces, and again, I'm using half of it. All right, so there is my diced onion. And I'm going to put that in my bowl. I've got everything going into one bowl here because it's all going to go into the pan at the same time. My sauce is finished simmering. The timer went off, so I turned the heat off underneath it until I was ready to put my vegetables in. Normally chicken cacciatore is made with chicken pieces with the bone in. You buy a whole chicken, you section it into pieces, or you can buy chicken pieces. It's cooked, the chicken is cooked with the bone in. I removed all the bones. I deboned my chicken last night. This is deboned thigh meat, drumstick meat, and breast meat on my website and on YouTube. I have a video and a PDF for how to debone a chicken. There's a couple of reasons why I'm doing this. One is it's easier to eat because you don't have to deal with the bones on the plate. And it's also easier to cook because the pieces are smaller, so it'll cook more quickly and therefore stay fresh. It'll have a fresher flavor. And the second reason is, as I mentioned earlier, I made my own chicken stock last night. Well, I made the chicken stock from the bones and the trim from the whole chicken. I have some time in this video, so I thought I would just give you a demonstration on how I debone chicken. All right, the first thing I want to do is take my wings off. The wing joint is right under the breast meat. So when I'm removing the wing, I cut really close to the wing because if I don't, there's breast meat right there. 
and it'll end up cutting through the breast meat. And I don't want to damage the breast meat. If you want to, you can section your wings into the drumette and the wingette by cutting through the joints. That's up to you. Now, I remove all the skin. It attaches rather securely right here along the center of the back, of the front. This is the, this is the breast right here. It also attaches securely along the back. So I get in and I remove that there. You can trim this up if you want. And then along the back, the same thing. I cut down through the back and then I start separating the skin along the back here where it adheres kind of securely. On the back of the thigh is an area where the skin attaches rather securely as well. Oh, another piece of liver just came out. There's more liver in there. So I'm just going to remove that connective tissue there where the skin attaches along the back of the thigh. And then I should be able to pull this whole piece of skin right off. If you're hearing a jet go overhead, yes, I do live near the airport. I can pull, pull the skin right off the end of the drumstick. Same thing on this side. So there's my chicken completely removed of skin. Now I'm going to take my legs off. The leg joints are right down inside of here. I'm careful about taking the legs off because there's two nice nuggets of meat. And I learned this from watching an old French chef recipe by Julia Child many years ago when I was living on the East Coast. Her show was broadcast by WGBH in Boston. So there's a pelvic bone right there. I'm cutting along the pelvic bone to remove that meat because there's a nice nugget of meat in there. There's another nice nugget of meat right inside of here where it comes right up against the backbone. So I cut along there to remove that nugget of meat. Now, with those two pieces separated, I can pop the joint out, finish cutting down through the joint, right there. There's a line of fat right here that that's a good indication of where the joint is between the drumstick and the thigh. I get in there with my fingers and feel it. I'm just going to expose it for you. And that's where the joint is. By cutting right down through the joint, you can very easily divide the drumstick from the thigh without having to cut through bone because, of course, the bone is very hard. The joint is very soft. I'm going to debone the drumstick first because that's the most difficult to do because you have this big piece of joint around the end of this bone. I get in there and start. You cut down to the bone and then I go in there along the bone with the knife and separate the chicken. There's tendons that run through here and connect down here. There's some of the tendons right there. Okay, that's the tendons. There's one right there. Once you separate those, then I just get in here and work around that joint. To separate the meat from the bone right around the end of that bone. This takes the most practice. This is the most tedious part. 
but you can see how quickly that meat came off. There's our bone with the, mo the meat removed, and there is a deboned, boneless piece of drumstick. You never see that in the store, boneless drumstick. I'm going to put that in my meat bowl. Here's my thigh. There's my bone cut right down to the bone. I do it on the inside. This is the outside, which is a nice smooth piece. I go on the inside. Just cut right down along the bone. And once you get to the bone, then work right around the bone. This, this one goes real simple. Like so. And that bone is out. Finally, the breast meat. That's the easiest of all because everything is just made very easy for you. There's a bone that sticks up right here. This is called the keel. So you cut down through the breast meat right alongside the keel, all the way down to the rib cage, right down to the bones. Then down here in the front, there's the wishbone. So I work underneath that to separate the meat from the wishbone and then what I do is I just work the knife right down along the rib cage to separate that breast meat from the ribs. Down here is the joint where the wing attached and go right down to the bottom. So there is a beautiful, nice, big, clean breast fillet. I think the breast is the easiest piece to take off. As far as how much chicken I have here, that's a chicken breast, obviously. You need a whole chicken that ranges between four to five pounds. That's about 1.8 to 2.3 kilograms. The meat itself that I ended up with after I removed all the bones and the skin, I ended up with about two and three quarters of a pound of chicken meat. That's about 1.2 kilograms. So I'm just gonna cube this up into large-ish chunks not so large as for a stew, but for a nice texture in a chicken cacciatore where it's obvious that you're eating chicken. Obviously it helps to have a sharp knife when you're doing this. So there is the last of my chicken meat chopped up. I'm going to return this to the bowl from whence it came. That's a lot of chicken for my cacciatore, but the feature obviously is the chicken. I'm going to bring my heat back up under my sauce here because I had turned it off after the sauce had cooked long enough. Remove my lid. And I'm gonna put my chicken in there. This, by the way, isn't gonna make a lot of sauce sauce, but it's gonna make a lot of stuff because of all the vegetables. If you like a lot of sauce, you can add additional sauce to this such as jarred sauce or marinara. I'm going to bring this back up to the boil. And I want to cook this just long enough to cook my chicken. I don't really care about the vegetables that much. I, I obviously don't want them to be too crisp, but having some crispness to the vegetables will give my sauce a fresher vegetable flavor. But I do, of course, have to make sure that that chicken is cooked all the way through. So I'm going to cover this. I'll reduce my heat to medium once this comes up to the boil. And every few minutes or so, I'm going to stir this and make sure that my chicken is all cooking evenly. In the meantime, I have to chiffonade my basil and do something a little bit extra. Oh, and before I go any further, I do want to add some pepper to this. And a good pinch of salt. 
Okay, let this come up to a boil and then start cooking. One area where my education seems to differ from the TV chefs is that I was taught that julienne, if it's something soft like cabbage or lettuce, is little strings. If it's something hard like carrots, it's little matchsticks. On the other hand, chiffonade, I was taught, is little threads. It's very, very finely cut. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to cut my basil leaves into chiffonade. So, what I do is I stack up my leaves with the biggest ones on the bottom and then I roll it up. It feels politically incorrect to say that I roll this up into a little green cigar what with tobacco having the reputation that it has. So let's just describe that as a little green doobie. <laughs> That'll get me in trouble. And then I'm using my ceramic knife because basil for some reason turns dark when it comes into contact with metal. Whereas the ceramic knife helps to keep it green. And I'm just cutting little, little slices through this roll so that I end up with these little threads. That's a chiffonade rather than a julienne. Yet another thing that I did yesterday besides boning a chicken and making chicken stock, I made up some homemade pasta dough. On my rep website and on YouTube, I have a PDF and a video for making pasta from scratch. I'm going to eat my chicken cacciatore over homemade pasta noodles. I have in the meantime brought some water up to the boil. There's my fresh pasta. And that cooks very quickly in about a minute or two. And then I will be ready to eat my lunch. So how I would plate this is put some of my freshly cooked noodles on that plate. Get them all in there. Might as well. And then with a ladle spoon my Oh, this looks so good. Spoon my chicken cacciatore over the top. Again, there's not a lot of sauce in that because I didn't use a lot of tomato sauce. Clean that up, make it look nice. And then either with chopped parsley or in my case, I'm gonna use my basil chiffonade. Just sprinkle that lightly with chiffonade basil and there it is my own version of chicken cacciatore the last step is to see how good that tastes all right i so want to taste my own chicken cacciatore <laughs> okay, um, my own chicken cacciatore. See, fresh vegetable flavor, a delicious flavor to the chicken. The celery is a little bit crisp. This is perfect, just perfect. I love my chicken cacciatore. So excuse me, I'm going to go enjoy a late lunch. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.